Good morning, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asian, I'm an urban gardener, growing in a small space in my backyard. Today, we are gonna do some spring prep, um, as we have been doing for a few weeks now, well, a couple weeks now. Today, we are going to look at the grapevine. I do not know if you can see it. It is all over the place. I have to figure that out. It is a muscadine grape. I've watched a few videos on it, um, and it appears that I keep two of the strong, um, I guess, vines, and then I need to get it across the fence and then cut the lateral vines. So we're gonna do that today, but I have to go to Lowe's or the dollar store and get some of the plastic uh, ties that you tie them to the fence with. Um, I'm gonna cut like literally all the way up that main leader and take the two strong ones. So. We're gonna see how that goes. Um, the other thing we're gonna do today is trim the fruit trees. So everything is pretty much dormant. There are no leaves on any of these trees. Um, and if you go down, so we're gonna basically just kind of thin the trees. The, this is a peach tree. Peach tree should be open in the middle from what I understand. So we're gonna trim anything that's growing inside of the tree and then we're going to trim uh well thin out some of these branches because there's a lot of branches um, so this is a peach tree and then down here we have apple trees um, and these apple trees definitely need to be pruned down some because i don't want them to grow really tall so now that we have somewhat addressed the uh well assessed the situation down here um, with the fruit trees i'm not a expert in gardening and i'm absolutely not an expert in trees or vines or fruits uh, but i am learning and we are going to learn together so right now we're going to run a tractor supply um one because i need to get like seven or eight bags of pine shavings to kind of fill up the chickens area so that it can start to uh, pull the smell and all of that stuff from their manure. I also need to look at getting a new chicken coop. We had a possum come into the chicken area uh, this weekend. I mean this week. Uh, it must have been Wednesday. No, it was Thursday. Um, and, and we could hear them hollering and screaming. And I came outside and there was a possum. There was a cat out here too that I don't know if it scared the possum and it made the possum move. I don't know. Either way, the possum is gone, but I have to do something with their area today. So I'm going to start off by um, trying to, you know, get the smell down. It doesn't smell bad, but I'm assuming that it attracted the possum. Um, and then I'm also going to figure out how to cover the top of their coop because I'm pretty sure it came through the top because it's not covered. Um, and then I need to get them a new coop because it's just in bad condition. And I could at least put them up at night because now I know I do have some type of predators in the area. Okay, so we are headed out. We're going to head out to Tractor Supply. We're probably going to go to Home Depot. We're probably going to go to Lowe's. Let's go ahead and do these few trips so we can get back to the house and get some of this garden work done. They only have the big ones that cost $44 and the small ones that nothing can fit in. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> I needed some more trash can. Well, I needed what? I think two more because I wanted to put their treats in one, food in one, you know, for the quail and for the chickens. I wanted to be separated. But we won't be doing that because they don't have any here at Tractor Supply. I will look when I go to Lowe's and Home Depot. So, all right, let's go get the pine shavings and move on. <laughs> Okay, so I trimmed everything, pruned everything. I did not do it on camera, but I will show you what I did so that you can see what I did. And then when things start to grow in spring, we can see if what I did was right. <laughs> or at least close, right? Okay, so let's see here. With the grapevine, this is my main vine, my main vine of the grape. And then it broke off or split right here in two. And so when I watched the videos, it said that you should keep your two main 
vines. And so that's what I did here. Everything that was growing any further down or in the middle, I went ahead and I cut it out and I took it off of the vine. And so now we're left with two vines. I used the stretchy tape to put the vine across the fence. Um, and I probably need to do a little bit more in some of the spots. I just haven't. Um, and then I did cut the end of it. So let's hope for the best. It had nowhere else to go. So I did cut it. I maybe could have let it come down here and keep growing. And maybe that's what I'll do next year. But I didn't do it this year. So those are my two main ones. Then what I saw was if there was a, a vine coming off of this plant, you were supposed to cut it at like the third bud so that's one bud two bud three buds I think let me see if I can move a little bit there's a shadow somewhere but anyway there's a third bud I cut a little bit above that third bud and so all the way down this vine if there was a vine coming out of the main one that's what I did I cut to the third bud so right here one two and three and so this is where my fruit should grow off of this vine next year so we will see <laughs> in reference to the peach tree i didn't cut a lot um, peach trees like i said need air in the middle they need an open center so i did cut anything that was coming into the center of the of the tree um, but i didn't cut a lot off because they are newer trees let me see if i could back up a little bit um, and so they're not that big anyway um, and they're not that tall so I didn't cut a lot off um, tell me do you think I need to cut any more of these limbs it's a lot of limbs nothing is crossing though so tell me what you think do I need to cut more or no <laughs> apple tree didn't cut much of anything off the apple tree I literally just came in and cut anything that was growing into the center but other than that nothing else same over here um, they had this one had a lot that was growing into the center so I did cut a good amount of that one off I decided not to cut the rose bush just yet um, either of the rose bushes just yet they do have new buds growing on them but I'm gonna give those a little bit of time and probably cut them maybe sometime um, late February that's my plan I do believe Right now, I'm going to take some time to get one of these bags. I brought six so that I don't have to keep going to the store. I just want to make sure that I have enough to really put, um, you know, a, a good layer of bedding into their coop area and their run area, really, um, to help with, like I said, the smell, help to compost their manure and things like that. Um, so I'm going to put a whole bag. It looks like a little bit because that bag is compressed. Once you open it and it loosens up, there's a lot of pine shavings in there. So I'm going to take time and I'm going to do that. I'm also going to clean out the inside of their, their indoor coop run or their covered run. Um, and I'm going to put that in the compost pile. I did grab some coffee grinds from Starbucks today. So I have a good amount of those. So I'm going to throw some coffee grinds in there, their manure. Um, I have some table scraps still, and I'm going to throw it in the compost pile, warm it back up uh, for a few weeks, maybe just a few days. When it's this cold, it doesn't stay warm long. Well, mine does it. I'm not going to say all compost doesn't. Um, so that's what I'm going to do really quick. And then later on today, we're going to start some cool weather seeds um, later today. But me and my daughter are having like a girl's day, so it won't be right now. It'll probably be later on the night. <laughs> Got two eggs. <laughs> it's always exciting to go in there and check and you have eggs. I mean, like literally, I have been raising chickens for two years, but every time I go to collect eggs, it's still just as exciting. <laughs> We're done with that. I think we're done with the outside at this point. I'm about to go take a shower and stuff and get ready for my mother-daughter day out. Um, and I will see y'all a little bit later so we can start some um, cold hardy seeds. Good morning, y'all. So 
I had hoped to start this video um, outside in the greenhouse. It is cold here. It was nicer yesterday, but I just didn't have the time. Um, it's cold here, it's gloomy, and it's raining. And so, welcome to my living room. <laughs> grab you some tea or grab you some coffee. I'm having tea, spearmint tea. Um, it is a part of the mint that I was going to leave outside and just let die because I said nobody needs that much mint. Everybody needs that much mint. <laughs> like, I am loving the mint. I am waking up in the morning and maybe spearmint, maybe chocolate mint, maybe sweet mint, orange mint. I, the only thing I did leave out there to die was that ginger mint. I did not enjoy the ginger mint. <laughs> mm. So, anywho, we are starting seeds this morning. We are starting cold loving seeds, um, plants that can grow in the cold. And so, Essentially, I am trying to get a second wave of what we planted in fall. I'm trying to get that in spring. Now, I do not know that this will work because we don't really have springs here. Um, our spring lasts for a few weeks and then it starts to get hot. Um, and so my plan is to plant these now, to uh, you know seed them, to start the seeds now, and then to plant them out at the beginning of March. So I'm a few days late according to my handy dandy uh, planner. So we were supposed to start cold hardy seeds on the, what was that, 18th? I got a new camera, y'all. Um, and I'm trying to record on two cameras, but I just turned the other one off because I've started this twice now and I can't decide where I wanna look. <laughs> so we'll get better with that, uh, but anyway. We were supposed to start these seeds on the 18th. Today is the 22nd. So we're a few days behind. It's not gonna make a big di difference. I'm gonna really quickly show you what we're gonna grow. Then I'm gonna show you like what I use to, to start the seeds, uh, the seed starting mix. I don't always use seed starting mix. We'll talk about that. Also, I got a good amount of um, herb seeds in, things that I was looking for. So I'm gonna share that with you too. Um, so let's start really quick. We have broccoli rob. Did y'all see how nicely that focused? I am loving this camera, y'all. Um, and then we have a green goliath broccoli, bok choy from my local feed and seed store, some green magic broccoli from Johnny's, bishop cauliflower from Johnny's, some slow bought lettuce from MI Gardener, some Paris Island cause lettuce also from MI Gardener, bib butterhead lettuce from MI Gardener. Red Romaine from M.I. Gardener. Marvel Four Seasons from M.I. Gardener. I also <laughs> picked up some onion seeds. These are seeds I did not need, but I am interested to see um, if one does better than the other for me. So of course, I went with my Texas Grano. They were my first success last year. Granix Yellow, Sweet Spanish Utah and a red burgundy. Texas Grano is a short day onion. I need short day onions for my area. Um, I don't know if the others are short day or not. They did not say. So the difference, there's a short day, long day, and intermediate day. Um, this is when the onion will start to bulb. I don't know all of the specifics, so I'm not gonna even try to explain it, but Google it if you want to grow onions in your area, um, just to make sure you get the right variety. The other thing that I start with is some type of medium to grow in. So this is a seed starting mix. It's from Jiffy. It is organic. I will start my seeds in pretty much any soil that I can find if it is organic. Um, and so I've done the miracle Grow in the black and yellow bag. They do have larger pieces in them, but I just picked those, picked them out. I have sifted my own compost and started seeds in it. As long as the growing medium doesn't have really large pieces of, of things in it, you know, rocks and sticks, you can start your seeds in it. Seed starting mix is ideal because it's very fine. So I have some in this bowl that I'm letting the water soak into, kind of, but it also takes a long time for the water to get into it and I haven't taken my hands to get the water in it. Um, and so I start mine in pretty much anything that is not overly, doesn't have overly large pieces in it. Um, the other thing is I use the plastic sale trays. I got a bunch of these from um, Amazon 
And so these are just six sale trays. I also have older ones from um, other things that I maybe purchased from my local feed and seed store or from Lowe's or Home Depot. So I saved those two because maybe they're four sale trays and they're larger or maybe they're longer. For the purpose of the seeds that I am starting today, I'm gonna use these six sale trays. I'm also gonna use these. These are fruit trays that I got from the store when I purchased like, you know, blueberries or strawberries. That's what these are. Um, I'm mostly gonna do the onions in these uh, because onions don't need a lot of space. They also don't mind their roots being disturbed. So you could start a whole tray of onions right here. Um, you don't even have to pot them up in some cases. Uh, they could grow in here and then you can put them right outside. And then the other thing I'm going to use, and this is mostly going to be for the lettuces today. Uh, these are also fruit trays, strawberries, mostly blueberries also. And I just saved them. They're perfect for starting seeds because you already have a top. It's kind of like the greenhouse. You don't have to put holes in it because there's already holes for drainage. These are perfect for starting seeds. So that's what I'm starting my seeds in today but let's get into starting these seeds and i will show you how i start the seeds onion seeds and lettuce seeds pretty much close to the same way and then all of the brassicas are pretty much the same but i'm gonna go ahead and show you anyway <laughs> so for the onion seeds we're gonna go ahead and use one of the fruit trays i already have holes in the bottom of this one because i used it for my last set of onions that died in the freeze um, and so you want to make sure that you have drainage in the bottom of it and then you want to put your soil in it make sure your soil is already moist i think i say this in every seed starting video that i do it's very important that you make sure your soil is already damp uh, because if not when you go to water it you can water from the bottom as well it's going to take time for it to soak up and through especially seed starting mix a seed starting mix takes a while to soak up the water which is why i had this just kind of sitting in water if you water from the top when you just planted seeds especially smaller seeds they're gonna get dislodged and either they're gonna end up on the top of the soil or they're gonna end up too deep in the soil. They can, not 100%, it's always gonna happen, but it can. And then you may experience issues um, with germination. So I would just recommend you having soil that's already moist. Um, and already moist soil will allow water to soak up in it. So what I'm doing now is what you want is for your soil to stay together. See that? And then it'll fall apart easily. So this is damp enough. So basically we're just gonna take the seed starting mix, put it in to the container. Gonna grab our onions. I'm gonna do two different onions in this one container. Make sure you push your soil down. I'm sorry, I definitely should have said that. So I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna find something to separate them, but I'm also gonna label them. So just gonna put a little indention in there. With onions, I sprinkle them across the top and then drop a little bit of soil over top of them and make sure there's contact. And then label them. Which I brought, I think there's 300 of these labels in here. I got them from Amazon. So I'll tell you why I decided to buy labels this year. My labels never make it out into the garden. Like they, they will stay in the whole time here inside the house. But when they go out into the garden, they never make it into the garden. Um, and that's when I was using like yogurt cups and things like that. And I don't know if it's because, I, I don't know why they never made it to the garden, but they didn't. And so, I feel like if I use labels, I should I should get them out into the garden. So we shall see. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make this label. And I probably should have got something a little bit shorter because something I forgot to tell you all is I cover my plants with saran wrap, well, my seeds with saran wrap until they germinate. Um, it helps to hold the moisture in. It helps to hold um, 
some humidity in as well. So um, I'm gonna make it work on here, even if I just press through here and, and put the plastic around it. Um, the next thing we're gonna put in here is the Granex Yellow PR Hybrid. <laughs> take a piece of plastic and this is something from it's called folder so nothing expensive i'm sure a decent size piece and cover i'm just going to put a little hole in here to get it around the label and then you just pull it down and wrap it there you have it and we have planted our onion seeds they are ready to go we will move over to the lettuce seeds so with these, I'm gonna plant more than one in this container. Right? Next is, let's clean up a little bit. Next, we're gonna clean up a little bit. <laughs> All right, so next, are the things that we're gonna plant in our trays. I'm gonna plant them all in here, and then I'm gonna let them germinate, and then I'm going to up pot them. I have found that in my seed starting area, sometimes my uh, plants will germinate and be a little bit laggy. And so I always up pot them and plant them deeper. And of course, once that happens, once they germinate and it's time for that to happen, I will show you all. I don't normally do it this way. It's just something I'm gonna try this year where, where I'm putting them all in one tray and then moving them. But I've always had to up pot them. So I don't see the point in wasting soil on this first round, if that makes sense. Wrap them in there. Try to move them around a little bit and get them down in the soil. All right, so now we are done. All of the seedlings are in their place. Um, I need to get a light bulb for this. They're on the back porch, but I haven't gone out there yet. Although they don't really need the light, I just use that also for the warmth. But they are here and ready to germinate. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to press like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.